Alderman Coles? Here. Alderman Lazara? Here. Alderman Shockey? Here. Alderman Szymarski? Here. Alderman E. Wesley? Here. Alderman R. Wesley? Here. Alderman Winger? Here. Alderman Woods? Here. Mayor Police? Here. Quorum present. Please stand and join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and First up, approval of minute City Council meeting, July 19, 2012. Do I have a motion? Make that motion. Second. All the Mr. Smarsky on the second. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, comments, corrections? Roll call. Okay. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman R. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman E. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Lazara? Yes. That passes. Next, communications and petitions. Citizens who wish to be heard on matters not listed on the agenda. Okay. Written communicate. Actually, I do we do have some citizens. That's this is on the agenda. not on the agenda. Uh, what side? Tom, are you going to speak or? Um, Mr. Mayor, I was going to wait until. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, huh? This would be your time. Yes. Wait, do that. Nick, can we load a drive on the computer real quick? Jim, did you want to speak, or Tom, while we load the pictures, or? Actually, Joe put together a little presentation. Joe, okay. Sorry. I didn't know they had the, I thought they just had pictures. Actually, while we're waiting, I can do written communiques. I have two written communiques. Uh, Brookwood on the green, uh, attention Mr. Mermis, Mr. Philander, just a short thank you to both Paula for being as helpful in expediting a building permit, and thank you to Mr. Bill Blecky on behalf of uh, Brookwood on the green. I have a request from Fenton High School Band and Choir, having been selected to participate in Disney World's Thanksgiving celebrations. Uh, they are actually looking for a donation if anybody is interested in making one. They have not put an amount here. Actually, they do have a Halloween candlelight bowl Sunday, October 28th, 2 p.m. at Wooddale Bowl. Spaghetti with the song Sunday, February 17th, 1 p.m. Fenton High School cafeteria. All proceeds go directly to the students. For the travel. Mr. Mayor, is that what they'll be short or what? It doesn't say if what they're short. I mean, if you want to wait till after the fundraisers. All the right was. Can we get more information on it? Okay. We'll uh, instruct the manager to make a call. Joey, would you like to sit at the table and use the microphone? All right, pass them out. To... Same thing as. Here, pass them 
before you start, could you state your name and address? My name is Joe Domaraki, and I'm with, and I'm, uh, my address is 383 Crestwood Road, Wooddale, in uh, the Woodside subdivision. Yeah, I understand. Go ahead. Okay, what uh, we're here to talk to you about is mm. the construction that's going on on uh, Central Avenue. What we're getting is uh, we have the runoff for the Ward yeah. 1, which includes Central Avenue. And what's happening is we're getting a lot of debris into the ponds. Uh, sent a couple uh, emails out showing you what's, what's going into the ponds. And I know they've tried to do some protection in there, but it hasn't been too effective. We have some later pictures that aren't on here that can kind of give you some idea what we're, what we're seeing. Yeah. This was after the July 1st uh, rain, and you can see the, the cloudiness of the water. You know, I mean, as soon as the, the rain started, you know, this is what we're getting in there. We're getting a lot of mud and sludge and debris in there. Yeah. What they were doing early on is they had some covers that were going over the drains, and I think from after that they may have put in some buckets or something to try to contain it, but there's still several of the storm sewers that, are, that have a, a lot of dirt and debris in there. This was an event on July 26th, and you can see the two, uh, the four corner pictures are the uh, north side of the pond and the the center picture is on the is the south side of the pond so you know the ponds are treated you know that's why the, the water is shaded and uh, but you can see there's a lot of debris that's coming in with it a lot of stones a lot of rocks a lot of sand and silt uh, what we you know this is from last saturday you know uh, the construction right now is they're going in uh, they're putting pipes in so they're cutting they're pumping into the uh, into the storm sewer, and at the uh, those two culvert pitchers, those are the the inlets to the to the north pond, and so that's the that's the material that keeps washing in there. It's you know it's uh, started at the beginning of the construction. It's a little worse now. It's a daily thing, but uh, it's not coming at the same rate. It's when we have a severe storm. We're getting a lot of heavy rains in July, and it's pushing all that mud into the pond. You know, our problem is we just cleaned those ponds. I don't know, it's about two, three years ago, and you know it's going to get to a point where we got to clean them again because when we look at the at the shallow parts of it, you know it's getting full. So the question is, uh, there's two questions. One is, what can we do, you know, to, to resolve it, to stop them from dumping into the sanitary, and not just the pumping, but allowing all the debris to go in there. And then who's going to clean up the pond? You know, right now, you know, we've got to take a look and see uh, how full it is and uh, when we're going to have to clean it again. But we just keep picking up more and more debris. So that's all we've got. And the cost of that? Uh, the, la the last time we, we cleaned the ponds, we, we cleaned uh, the North Pond plus a part of a channel. It was $25,000. And we didn't expect to have to clean it. You know, that was the first time it was cleaned, really, in 14 years. We know we have to clean it a little more often, but it's only been three years. And when the ponds get lower, we can see the debris piled up. Alder and Eugene Wesley. Mr. Mayor, do we have... Obviously, we have our engineer here. I just want to ask one question. Um, I did a little research on how you could determine how much silt is built in from runoff from, and I'm not saying you don't have it, mm -hmm. but 
it will give us indication there's there's a technique that's out there that will tell us how much if I if he can take the podium and as if that question is true that I did the research actually John did some research on okay and okay but we it's a thing that could go down in the ground it could set, show you how much silt is actually in there that we created for those ponds or or we didn't I'm well, not in favor of one comment uh, Really, the entrance to that only comes from downstream from Ward 1. I understand that. Okay. Okay. Mr. Kramer, go ahead. Thank you. Um, we were made aware of these pictures uh, some weeks ago. We have talked to our contractor. Um, we have been following the best management practice for stormwater protection with those filter baskets. If we go back to those slides that indicate the uh, storm inlets, each of those filter baskets are below that grate. And that filter basket has a screen on it. The intent of that basket is to stop any obvious debris from getting in there. What you're seeing downstream is the fine sediment that's flowing through. It's impossible to prevent all of that. So any construction project is gonna have some runoff period to that. Um, we realize that. We contend that there probably will be a, a minor amount of sediment buildup on those ponds. As Alderman uh, Eugene Wesley was referring to, there is a test where you use a soil sample, a rig, and a spoon to go down in that actual bed of that pond area after the mouth, after that water settles out, and we can determine how much was actually put in after the construction was over. So um, I did actually forward actually to you, Mayor, a cost from one of the engineering firms that we use for doing that testing. It was a few thousand dollars, 1500 to $2,000 was a ballpark price. I didn't have the exact depths of that pond currently. I didn't know how many samples we were going to take. So that is a possibility to do that. But again, as far as the construction methods being used, by the contractor, they are top tier. Baxter and Woodman, who's our RE, who is out there, they are working with them on that. And again, since we've had such a dry year, traditionally, we don't get the ability to clean up off the street as well as we have these last couple construction projects, just because since there has been no rain, we can really use the end loader on the streets to get a large bulk of that material off. Those fine particles, of course, any during any rainstorm are gonna filter down and go into the storm sewer system. So okay. these are the, the buckets. Oh, Mr. Domarecki, go ahead. I'm sorry. Can it's I okay, talk? go ahead. These are the buckets you're talking about, right? Correct. The ones that are Into the microphone, please. Can we put those? Yeah. What he's, what he, excuse me. The pictures? What he's showing, could he put them? We don't have the overhead, right? No, no the. Uh, through the, uh, yeah, the no, it's okay. All right, sorry. You know, that are showing the pictures buckets pretty full. Some of them are. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. So how much of that overflows back into the, the pond? I think that you need to measure it. If you got a method to do that, that's fine because you know there's a, a lot of stuff that's uh, leaking past those. Yeah. Mr. Kramer, something further, or Mr. Wheeler, did you want to make a comment? Yes. Yep. Yes, my name is Jim Wheeler, and uh, I'm a resident of uh, 389 Crestwood Road. I, I do live on, on the detention or retention ponds. Um, one of the tactics are actually one of the motions that has been used in the past is to refer this to the stormwater committee and I'm going to ask you not to do that and the reason why I'm asking you not to do that is because this decision is going to in, uh, it's going to involve money 
it's going to involve equipment, okay? And it's also gonna involve the manpower of the city of Wooddale and the stormwater committee does not have control over that. So um, if a decision is made, I'm asking for it to be made and discussed you know, with the council. Uh, I do know that the city does have some equipment that they use to suck the sewers out. And this is a small pond that we're talking about. And it's, a, it's the North Pond. Um, and the 36 inch opening is coming from all of the storm sewers and actually the grass now from Ward 1, from the majority of Ward 1. And the water is actually, it's just a natural process where the silt is settling out from the water. There are no scuppers from Woodside that actually go into the North Pond. So the only thing that goes into the North Pond from Woodside is the runoff uh, from the um, lawns. So it can't create all the silt. We, I believe it was three years ago, we spent $25,000 um, sucking the, uh, the silt out and we had a company do it. And part of the problem that I have, or that Wood, Woodside has, is that it's an additional tax to the people that live in Woodside. And, um, you know, I believe it's, it's, the silt is actually coming from the storm sewers upstream of us. We're, we're allowing the city to use, <laughs> to use our ponds. We do own the ponds, okay? And the city is depositing um, the muck in the north portion of the pond. So we're wondering if the city can allocate some equipment or some resources to remove the sediment from that pond. And that's, that's our request. So, so basically he's looking to bring this to a public works committee. Alderman Woods, comment? That was gonna be my suggestion. Do we need a motion for that? Do we have a motion? I'll make, I'll make the motion. I'll start it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And that committee meeting Okay. Is, uh, so what was the motion? Can August I hear? August 23rd what? to bring it to our uh, committee. Okay. All right. August 23rd. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we did written communication. Next under mayor's report. Uh, due to all the power outages, uh, that uh, 10,000 we had in the, for the generator grant, uh, we are basically at the limit. If uh, the council concurs, the manager under his authority could go another 9,500 if the council concurs, because we still have some residents bringing those receipts in. And we have, not on this list of bills, but on the next list of bills, the finance director told me we will be at the $10,000 threshold. Alderman Roy Wesley. Um, I would like to see the, the manager go ahead and uh, do the authorization for more. Second on that? Second. Just, just, uh, just keep the power on on Ward 4. Ah. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And while we're talking about power, uh, yesterday was a meeting with ComEd. I met with them. There was uh, enlightening information on tree trimming and how that works, and some areas are not going to be done, we found out, because, uh, and I had Mr. Forrest come up to the meeting because once we found that out, we're kind of stunned. So there will be some uh, information coming out on what, uh, what gets trimmed, what doesn't get trimmed, and as far as their five-year plan that they gave us, it's kind of a joke. I'm sorry, I just got this uh, late yesterday. I did meet with our state representatives today and they're gonna try and get us a little more definitive answer on what this means because it really means nothing. It's just uh, an FYI, Alderman Eugene Wesley. Mr. Mayor, I would ask that this go in exec session uh, to discuss behind closed door possible litigation. Possible litigation. Give me a second. Right? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Okay. All right, Shirley. Mike. That concludes my report. Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just uh, one item. Um, we know we've had uh, excess summer heat, um, July storms, uh, a lot of power outages in town. And the city of Woodale would like to show their appreciation towards residents' understanding. Um, for this on Thursday, August 9th, um, they invite you to come out to Prairie Fest and receive one uh, food voucher for every person in your household. Um, good for use on Thursday night, only during the fest. Um, any food vendor there, you can use it for. Um, if you'd like some more information on the program, you can call City Hall or there's information on the website. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, next consent agenda, we have one item on the consent agenda. I need a, mo need a motion. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. What is the item? I don't. A resolution seeking to approve a contract award to a lamp concrete contractor. It was revised. It was general. revised. All right. Is there a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Forget it. Our second. Now I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the item on the agenda. Resolution seeking to approve a contract award to ALAMP Concrete Contractors Incorporated for the Stoneham Street Reconstruction Project. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Do we have a question on this? Alderman Roy Wesley, go ahead. We're, we're not on um, so if I guess, you know. Um, didn't we have this at committee months ago? Shouldn't it go from committee right to council? Mr. Manager. Yes, this was at committee previously. Uh, it's not uncommon for an item on any committee report to be passed at committee and then take a couple council meetings before it's finalized, either for legal review or contract signatures. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, oh, sorry, roll call, please. This is money. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Lazaro? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman E. Wesley? Yes. Alderman R. Wesley? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. That passes. Next, committee chairman reports, planning and zoning, Alderman Winger? I have no report. Public health and safety, Alderman Coles? I'm refusing to answer this because I'm for gambling and I, somebody else has to read this. I'm refusing to do this. I'm sorry, but that's it. All right, I'll read it. Item number one, a resolution providing for the submission of an advisory public question to the electors of the city of Wooddale regarding whether to allow video gaming within the corporate limits of the city of Wooddale. Do I have a motion? Before we, I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Question. This, Alder, you got to have a question. Alderman Ray Wesley, go ahead. This is a non-binding referendum, correct? Mr. Bond. <clears throat> That's correct. It's provided for under the Illinois Constitution and the uh, uh, Illinois Election Code. It is a non-binding referendum. In order to have a binding referendum, it has to be initiated by the electorate and consists of twenty-five percent of the uh, total electric in the city of Wooddale. We, could, could I go on? Go ahead. We did a non-binding referendum for Irving Park, correct? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to call up a couple of people on this. Well, we have a couple of people that would like to speak on this matter. Okay. Is I'll that wait. okay? We'll let them speak. Commander of the American Legion. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. My name is Paul Heideman, and I am the commander of our American Legion here in town. I understand that 
there was some discussion of bringing this, uh, the subject of video gaming to a referendum to the citizens of Wooddale. I realize this has been a hot button issue with not only the citizens of our town, but other communities as well. But I really ask that you really look into yourselves if and when this comes up for a vote. We all saw the last meeting on this issue, whether you were here or you're watching it on TV. And though it took a while, <laughs> it did pass eventually. I ask what kind of message would you be sending by doing an end around on this issue? In other words, to me, it says, I didn't really get my way, so I'm gonna find another way of going around this. There are reasons why meetings are run the way that they are. Everyone voted on it and a result came from it to permit video gaming into the city of Wooddale like the majority of communities around us. To give business, businesses like ours, American Legion, a fair shake at staying afloat to help out our veterans and our community. I believe the American Legions and the VFWs, possibly in a selfish way, are the backbone of any community. To teach our youth the right and wrong, to help the returning vet, and to keep a strong national defense. Even giving this a chance at being overturned, I believe what you're saying to the Wooddale business owners is, Mr. and Mr. Business Owner, I had a chance to help you out of this mess that we're all in, but decided, I decided not to do that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Jim Bender. My name is Jim Bender. I live at 222 Dalewood in Wooddale for 35 years. I own JB's in Wooddale. I would like to second what the commander just said. And for just a little example, a week ago Tuesday, I took out my golf game. I just, there were some issues and I took it out. And Wednesday they were mad at me. Thursday they were mad. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They were playing in Addison at 601 because people are going to go where they want to play. And I had to get one in and I got my ass in gear and got it in there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Paul Jensen. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Paul Jensen. I'm an attorney at the law firm of Shevsky and Freilich in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I'm a gaming attorney and I represent a significant portion of the video gaming industry. Um, I just wanted to mention that, you know, the gaming board, their website lists Wooddale as a viable location for video gaming at this point, which is fantastic. And your locations are now starting to apply to the gaming board for location licenses right now. We believe that within the next month or two, we will see some locations licensed. <clears throat> when a terminal operator places video, or places video gaming terminals into a bar or, or other location here, it will invest about $100,000 in those locations. In addition, the bars, when they get ready for video gaming, very likely will need to build portions of those bars out to uh, comply with the statute and all the other rules that, that the gaming board has prescribed. It potentially could be financially devastating to not only the terminal operators, but, but the bars as well if Wooddale, after having said yes to this and having their locations get licensed, then a couple of months later or shortly after the locations go live with video gaming, changes its mind. So I think, you know, speaking on behalf of many of the potential licensees in the room, we would love to see Wooddale stick with the decision that this body had, has made recently and allow video gaming. And I'm certainly here to answer any questions that anyone has about the act. I've lived it for three years. <laughs> Somebody have a question for the gentleman? Mr. Lazaro. How many businesses are you representing? Uh, I don't know how many locations we represent here, but we represent about 50% of the terminal operators in, in uh, Illinois and about 50% of the manufacturers and distributors of the video gaming terminals. And I've got about 400 locations across the state that we represent. Alderman Winger. I just want to um, ensure that I understand uh, my understanding of the rules around if you're in an establishment 
where minors can enter or people under 21, that yes. the gaming area does have to be corridored off by perimeter and a clear entrance and viewable by someone 21 or older. That, that is correct. That is absolutely right, and the gaming board agents that are going to be visiting these locations, that's one of the first questions they will ask the bar owner and the terminal operator. If under 21 are present on, at, the, at the premises, how exactly are they going to cordon it off or separate it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Joe Butis. I'm Joe Butis. I live in Wooddale, 156 Oakwood Drive since 1958. I'm a past commander of the, National, of the VFW Club here in Wooddale. We've been in the town for 16 years, and now we're looking for the video gaming that we could get a chance to get it. And uh, I want to know, I've been at the last two meetings over here, and I watched everybody haggle this thing back and forth and back and forth, and finally the first time they passed it, the gavel came down. Second week, we had to come back again, hashed it all out again, and the gavel came down after it was passed. I want to know why this suggestion of going to the voters over there wasn't put in either one of those two meetings. Why did we have to wait until afterwards? Because do we have to come back again another couple of weeks from now on something else? Because another alderman thought about something different? I think that once a gavel comes down, I think that no, at many of these organizations or any company that's got board meetings, when a gavel comes down, that means it's final. But I thought it was going to be final because we were pretty happy. I read the rules and regulations that the gentleman from the, uh, the gaming board has come out. The manager and the assistant manager, or the owner of the company and the manager of the company, got to fill out a long form. They got to go out there for fingerprints. Then there's a form to be filled out for the business that's got to be taken care of. Then, they, then you got to have, when the inspector comes over, you got to have everything all set up as to where this is going to be. It's got to be within the vision of the bartender. It's got to be cordoned off. All of that stuff has got to be taken care of. And I, I can't see where we're going to keep haggling this thing up because if you let it go now to the, to the uh, people over here, that's not going to be until November. And then what happens after that? We already lost three or four months and then another couple of more months because we won't get no machines because it's too late. We're the last at the bottom of the list. I'm sorry, but thank you. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Alderman Schrock, you want to say something? I have to apologize. I was incapacitated, could not come to those other two meetings, so we didn't have a full council. Uh, according to the rules of order, Robert's rules of order, we can bring this back up uh, when somebody's missing. Um, no. My view no. is that we do have a responsibility to all the citizens of Wooddale, including the residents and including the businesses. And I'm not trying to back away from that. But I do believe that we as a council shouldn't make this decision on our own. There are some decisions we have to make without the citizens' input, such as our treatment plant. We have to do it. But this is an issue that is, and I listened to the meeting on TV, watched that on TV three times and absorbed all the different arguments, both sides, everything that was said. But there were no residents per se from that live in my ward at least, and I don't think of any ward that had a say. It was just the businesses. My suggestion would be to follow up with this non-binding resolution in the meantime, to send out a letter to each of the qualifying businesses and ask them, number one, are they asking for this license? And number two, why? So we have a balanced approach. We can, we can have the referendum non-binding from the citizens. We can have the information from the businesses. We can make a more informed decision and to be honest with you if if the voters say let's say 60% of them or 65% say no 
I don't think that's enough. So I would vote to have the gambling. If the vote, though, by the citizens is like 85% not to have it, these are the people that elected me, and I have to listen to them. It's, it's really, a, you know, it, to sit up here and make these decisions is, is not an easy thing to do. I, I lose sleep over it. I really shouldn't, but I do. Um, we, we have to look at everything we do very closely for the whole community. And I've got friends out there that are businessmen, and I hope they'll still be friends after this, whatever happens. But I think it's my responsibility to answer to the residents as well. And I'd like to, I don't know if we need to make that as, we don't need to make that as part of the resolution, but I think we can instruct the city manager to do so, to send these letters out and get answers as to what the businesses would like and how many would like it. You know, if the state really, pardon my language, screwed us. They said, you have to give it to everybody with a license to distribute liquor. Do we want to do that to everybody who has a license to distribute liquor? I think there may be some places that we really don't want to do that with. If, if, if I knew, if we could choose and say American Legion, you, v, VFW, the bowling alley, uh, the Tom Sachs, uh, BJ, and, and, and the, the bar uh, we, uh, that I frequent uh, once in a while, uh, T, 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 T Wood, uh, I'd say, psh, sure, because I know they're responsible. But I don't think from the records I've seen that every place that has a liquor serving license does have the same responsibility. They don't have, and they continue to have difficulties with the city in that respect. So I'm going to vote for this advisory referendum, keeping in mind what the businesses want, and what the citizens want. In the meantime, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, every place that would like to can submit the papers. I don't think there's that much cost in submitting the papers, but I would advise them not to put any real big money. It's $100,000 for placing the machines in each facility. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you're talking about big, big bucks. And in, in watching the, the, the programs, uh, the, the meetings, I get the impression that there's not that much money. I mean, the city is going to, you know, we have a budget of $10 million, and we're talking about maybe fifty to $100,000. And if we have 90% of the people or 95% of the people that don't want gambling in town, video machines in town, where do I stand? I've got to stand for the people that I represent. I, I apologize to the businesses, and I don't think it's going to, I hope it doesn't make a difference to make somebody move out of town or to, or to lose their business. It's not, I don't believe it's that much money. I think the state stunk when they put the issue on us to do it individual municipalities and and I think it's wrong and I, I you know when I get gas if I've got a dollar or two I'll go in and I'll walk in and I'll buy a lotto ticket Same thing but but hold on, hold on. when I'm at the VFW playing bingo and I do and I see somebody that wins a game, $80 for one game. And then they turn around and they buy tabs. I know Joe makes, the VFW makes most of their money on tabs. But they spend the whole 80 bucks on tabs. 
we had 30, uh, 30 closings, 30 houses that were, were, what do you call it, that went back to the bank? Foreclosed. Foreclosures. If one person takes that paycheck on his way home and stops in a bar and says, ah, I'm gonna, maybe I can double my money this time, and they don't pay that mortgage payment, that's another foreclosure possibly. And I don't want that on my conscience. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have to represent the people that I represent. All right. Thank you. Did somebody want to make a comment without turning this into a debate? Yes, Mr. Mayor, can I speak on behalf of the American Legion? Go ahead, you have to go to the podium. Thank you. Again, I'm Mark Richter. I'm the past commander of the American Legion Post 1205. I just want to address uh, Mr. Shockey's uh, comments. I think the, the important things that we got to realize is, one, this isn't something we came up with a week ago, right? This has been a process now for a little bit more than, I think, three years, maybe a little bit more than three years, uh, that the gaming has been put in. <clears throat> the reality of the situation is we're getting to a point now where not passing it here in Wooddale is going to cost the businesses the, the opportunity to succeed at this. The timing is to the point where we've got to get into our vendors. Our vendors have to start making their assessments and getting their equipment ordered and getting their processes in. This is going to be one of those things. When the floodgates open, they're going to open hard. They're going to open fast. It's going to take the equipment out of it. When we're talking $100,000, it's not a made-up number, right? It's a number based on they got to get the equipment in, they got to have it available, five machines per unit, there's internet connections that's got to be made. These are all investments. I think most of the providers have invested more than a couple hundred thousand hours just in getting licensing, let alone attorney fees. I think uh, Paul can back us up on those. Um, so they need to have commitments from the businesses in order to start making purchases. They are not making purchases based on, well, maybe they're going to get it in. So let's get, I think we need 25, 40 machines here for Wooddale at a couple I think there's seventy or eighty thousand dollars a piece minimum on it. So those people need to have commitments in. So timing is getting to the point where if we wait for another referendum and those machines come out, quite honestly, the machines could come out starting the end of this month. The time frame of being through here in December, those machines start rolling out. The reality is when those machines come out in locations that were smart enough to let them into their towns and villages, people will move their business to those places. We lost gambling. You, those, those businesses go away. A lot of our customers who are, you know, again, we're not for profit. Remember, we are part of the community. I understand you want to talk to your residents. We are those residents. The American Legion, the VFW wants nothing more than to support the community. That's what we do. So we're not looking to harm the community. We're not even looking for a profit. We're looking to keep our doors open so that we can support these vets. If our customers decide to go someplace else and start gambling, because it's available to them, they're not coming back to us. We may or may not be able to stay open until Wooddale gets through a referendum, finds out the residents want this, passes it, and then lets, allows us to get those things, especially if there's a shortage of the game systems. Now, those guys are three, four, five, six months ahead of us just to get the games into us. People are already used to playing there and gambling there. They may not come back. I'll be honest with you, I was a commander of the American Legion Post. We lose business, we can't afford to stay open six months to wait to find out. We'll have, to, we'll have to close down. We're not going to make it. We're barely making it now. So these, these machines will help us. I think the other thing that we got to look at, besides the timeline, we're talking about the responsibility of you guys to represent your, your members. Quite honestly, in this country, that's the beauty of free business, right? If people don't want gambling, they won't support the gambling. They won't go to those gambling facilities. It's not, it's not a complicated decision for them to make. If we're not making money at gambling, it goes away. So if 95% of the residents of Wooddale aren't going to gamble, those machines aren't going to make us a nickel. They'll probably pull them out of us. It'll answer itself. We don't need to follow through. When we talk about responsibility of the businesses and responsibility of the gamblers, <clears throat> can you hold up that packet you got with the rules and regulations of this? Paul, I'm sorry. Th those are the rules and regulations that have been determined by Illinois. They've already been gone over. There are so many rules, there are so many things that need to be followed in there that if you've got a situation where one of the bars that you have to, you know, the, the point was that you have to give them if they serve liquor, you have to get in the gaming, 
If they're not doing what they're supposed to do, if they're not being responsible with it, any one of those regulations shuts them down. Illinois is not going to be playing with this. This is not, there's no room for error in this. Those regulations, if you've read through them and taken the time to read through them, are very specific. A place will not last in business if they don't follow those regulations. Everything revolves around this being successful. So Illinois will take care of those businesses. If there's a business being irresponsible, it's just like any other business being irresponsible in Wooddale. You guys know for yourselves, if there's a bar serving underage minors, how long is it going to stay open in Wooddale? If you guys got anything to say about it. It ain't going to stay long, right? Mr. Mayor, back me up on that. And that won't so be long. It's the, same, it's the same thing for gambling. If a bar is going to have irresponsible gambling going on, if they're not following the regulations that the state of Illinois has set out, they will not last long. They will get closed down. This will handle itself. I don't want to see us have to wait and wait and wait before we can advance and move ahead and keep our businesses, our community, and, and in particular, you know, I'm sorry, businessmen who are going to make a profit on this, but this is why we're here, is to keep this community running and functioning. If we can't stay open, we can't do that. If we continue to wait, other bars get these things and they take our businesses away, I guarantee you we will close. We cannot stay open if we lose any more business than we already have due to the economy. So again, I think, I think I've droned on enough. Please read these. The facts are there. When you're talking, you know, this is going to be $50,000, they're talking about a quarter of a million dollars to Wooddale. Read, the facts are here. They're talking about without percentage of increases over the next 10 years, I think it's $3 million total to the city of Wooddale. That's based on your percentage of the $192. It's in, it, it, go through this. I don't want to have to spend the whole time going through this. There is some significant money here. Will it come true? I don't know. It's, you know, liar's figure and figure's lie or whatever, however you want to say it. But there is definitely some significant money that if you opt out of this, you're not going to see any of it. And none of us are going to have that opportunity to provide that money to you guys. So I think it's beneficial to the community. It gives them an outlet for, for gaming. It keeps businesses that are having a real tough time and believe me, liquor establishments are having a real tough time this time in the economy. You know, that's one of the things where time can go and money can go. It gives people the opportunity to maintain those businesses. We're not even looking at, you know, I'm not a big gambler. I'm not a big thrill gambler. But I can tell you one thing. If we don't have gambling and somebody down the street does, they're going down the street. They, they do that for six, seven months while we hash this out. I can tell you, the, the American Legion can't stay open. We lose customers. We can't stay open six, seven months. We don't have a slush fund. So... That's all. Thank you. Thank Alder you. Roy Wesley, go ahead. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you, you mentioned about the American Legions here, uh, can't stay in business or anything else. Is your, is American, not American Legion open to the public yet? American Legion is not open to the public. It's open to the members. We're open to the public during special events. Okay. I find this hard to believe because, you know, I was a son of allegiance many years ago, and the American Legions didn't follow up and send me my membership or anything else, and they just forgot all about me. And I find it hard to believe that you would sit up here and say you can't stay in business with your nonprofit. They said $100,000. American Legions has $100,000 to invest? No, no. No, no. no. The operator, Wait, hold on, hold yeah, on. Think, how, hold much, on. how much does it, would it cost American Legion to put these machines in? Nothing to put the, to, to put the machines in, it costs us nothing. How much will we lose if we don't have the machines? That's a question. How many people are going to go someplace else to drink and gamble? Well, I, think it, I think you should look, open it up to the public, too, though. Well, again, I mean, that's another okay. argument. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, one at a time. Yeah. All, all, I, all, I can tell you about, uh, all I can tell you about is our budget is what our budget is. I can, you know, I've been a commander for two years. Trust me, we've been struggling. Uh, we, we've had a lot of things we've had to cut costs on. A lot of it due to the economy. You know, I mean, the economy's bad. Bars, places like that, this, it's entertainment. You know, you got to pay your heater, you got to get entertained. People make their choices. So our businesses have been declining. I can tell you now, if we lose customers, if we lose our members that come into our post, go someplace else because they want to gamble and that's where they have to go, that yes, we will close. I'm, we are that tight and we are that close. I don't want to see that happen as past commander and as a member of the American Legion. I know you guys, you know, you, Wooddale's always supported the Legion. I'm, I'm not questioning you. But it is that close and it's that critical. And we're not talking about minutes. We're not talking about days. We're not talking about, oh, we can pass this in November and get it out. Waiting till November may cost us to getting games six or seven months. 
And it's, that's a sincere reality. We've talked to our vendors, we've talked to the people that have come out, we've talked to the attorneys, it's, it's a sincere reality. When these gates open, all of the capacity that's built into the system will go out quickly. Then they need to build back up again and that can take a lot of time. We can't last. Anything follow up? Alderman Lozara? Thank you. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is law. We voted on it, we passed it, and it's law. The referendum, I don't feel that it's necessary. And the reason I say that is because I was elected to make tough decisions for my ward and for every other ward. I didn't ask for a referendum when I lost the battle of increasing the water. I accepted it and I lost and it's a law. And the same thing that goes with our uh, increasing our tax levy. I lost that one. I didn't call for a referendum. We make tough decisions up here. That's why we're elected. We have a law in place. I don't feel that it's necessary to go to the, uh, to the public on this. And then one of the reasons I'm saying this is because I was a park commissioner for over seven years and one of the number one events that was attended by the seniors was gambling. Went to the boats. So much so that we had to get another bus. I went to the seniors yesterday for lunch. Not one person came up to me and objected. And I, and, and I was the guy that you should have objected to because I'm one of the people that passed it. I've gotten one phone call so far about people being against it. And just show of hands, how many people here are against it? How many people came to this meeting? If there are so many people that were dead against it, where are you? The reality is this, if we are going to make a moral judgment over gambling, then we may need to make a moral judgment about liquor. Because to me, somebody that's sitting on a bench that's gonna be spending $80 on liquor is more of a hazard to this city than somebody that's sitting on a bench putting $100 into a machine. Because when you leave after you put $100 into a bar, who are you hazardous? You're hazardous to everyone. But you put $100 into a machine, who are you going to hurt? So if we're worried about the person that has a gambling problem, we should be worried about the person who has a drinking problem. And then let's go further. We should be worried about the person who has an eating problem. Why are we allowing fast foods in this city? I made a decision, and I'm going to stick with it, and it's because I do believe in the VFW Hall that they need it. I do believe the American Legion needs this. And if we have some bad apples that we don't want to have this, well then maybe we shouldn't have liquor license in their hands. Maybe that's the issue. Not putting gambling as a burden to everybody. Maybe we got to stop that. Maybe we have the wrong people with liquor license in this city. So let's address that issue and not penalize the good people that we know can do this and handle this the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Joe Coles. All right, I, I'm the guy that started this and I got the other ones through. I just want people to realize that I don't gamble myself. And anybody that plays bingo gambles. Anybody that goes, I don't want to say it, but you, Holy Ghost Church has a casino night. And as far as I'm concerned, when you put casino on something, that's gambling. And I, I didn't want to say it, but that is it. Anybody that comes to your door that has a ticket and wants to sell it to you for $5, 
six tickets for five dollars and there's a prize on it a, a money prize on it that is gambling too so and anytime you go the Perry fest has a tent which is controlled by the vfw and that's a uh, uh bingo too which is gambling there so i mean gambling is throughout the whole city every computer that you have in a house you can put a, a card in it and punch any number you want and get it any place you want. And if you want to go, if you want to go to Kentucky to see the Kentucky Derby, you'll find something in that. When you put it on, there's always a place where you can place a bet. So uh, that's why I couldn't say this resolution. I just, it, I'm, it was out of my heart to to say it. So. That's one of the reasons why I, I didn't say it. And I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Shosmarski, you had your, no, Alderman Shockey, go ahead. Hey. As I mentioned before, I do gamble responsibly. And probably 95% of the people or more do gamble responsibly. But we have that percent that doesn't. Now, we're talking about the state of Illinois having a big deficit because they don't know how to do a damn budget. We, as a city, have been fiscally responsible, and we're in good shape. They're talking about here in this economic impact, 439,000 jobs over the next five years. Come on. We don't have that many people in town. If this motion, which is, I think, a good compromise to have the non-binding refer referendum and to find out which, how many businesses would want this, if that doesn't pass, I will be making a motion to repeal ordinance number 0-09-35. I don't want to do that. I'd rather wait and see what everybody has to say so I can make a better informed decision. Thank you. Alderman Winger. Thank you. Um, currently, video gaming is our law. The attorney that stood up here, he went to the same website I did. I saw the reality that we put video gaming in effect July 19, 2012. That, to me, is updated daily. It's on the website. Um, I have no indications that video gaming will be a problem. And I know that the four main locations that even have the space for this are, are here tonight. And they are all, uh, all for our responsible establishments. They're going to have to have the uh, video games corridored off. We already know that, given the specifications of the law. And uh, I would certainly. If, if in the future it is a problem, and I doubt it will be, then I'd rather see an advisory referendum at that time when we know there could be a potential real issue that the residents can get educated on and then decide on their own. Right now, it's, I believe it's premature, and, um, and, and I'd like to keep our law the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Woods, you haven't spoken yet. Yeah, for me, I said it before, I'll say it again. It's not for the four or five people that want it in here. This is a new thing. It's new to all the communities. Everybody's rushing to jump in, you know, uh, to get their share of the pot of gold, so to speak. Now, there's going to be saturation. Will people make some extra money? Yeah, I'm sure they will. Uh, do some of the organizations need this? I have to listen to them and say, yeah, they probably do. The biggest concern for me is, uh, a, I have no control over it. You know, the attorney back there holding the book, he's got a whole book full of rules and regulations. Well, state of Illinois has got, you could fill this whole room with all their books. It doesn't necessarily uh, solve the problems or the issues. I personally would prefer to go a little slower. I'm not against gambling. I'm against knowing what the outcome's gonna be. I'm against not having any of that control over those businesses. We can argue that because of the liquor licenses, we have control, but that gets into a, a lot of other 
issues uh, we get into, we're going to make uh, whatever it is, $100,000. Uh, we'll probably spend that if we try to control uh, the gambling section. Certainly, it's going to add more expense in, in people going in to spot check uh, these places. Uh, although, you know, Alderman Lazar brought up some really good points. Alderman, I mean, everybody's got some good points up here. I think the biggest fear the people have that are right now leaning against it is the inability to control it and what's going to happen down the road. It's not about just you guys sitting here. It's what companies are going to come in uh, afterwards. And do we have any right to control them? Thank you. Um, this question's to attorney. You know, last week we sat here and talked about referendums, or two weeks ago. The question was, the question was, could we do a referendum, the city do a referendum? No. Could, could you rephrase? Go ahead, Mr. Bond. Sure. The uh, question that was posed at that time was, could the city initiate a binding referendum on the question? And the way the law is, uh, currently exists is the only binding referendum that can be initiated is by the electorate. And the city does not have the authority under state statute to place a binding referendum on the ballot. Follow-up? Go ahead. Mm, so uh, could you, why didn't you advise us that a non-binding referendum could be put on? Mr. Bond. Well, you always say you can put a non-binding referendum on any issue, whether you think the city of Wooddale is better than the city of Chicago. You can do it on anything, any item, any question. You always have that authority. I, I was not aware that was an option at that time or something.